Okay, welcome to Math 65. Today we're going to finish up um, 6.4, the AC method. But before we talk about this last page, there are three different word problems here, and I might go ahead and add another one to the mix. Let's go ahead and turn to the back page and talk about this zero property or product property. So let's break this down. Zero product. What does the word product mean? Yeah, multiplication. So what do you know about zero? Anything times zero is zero. So if I told you that two numbers multiply together to give you zero, each one of these numbers are called factors. When you multiply two numbers together, they're called factors, yeah? Two factors make a product. If you know that two numbers are multiplying together to give you zero, do you know anything about either one of those numbers? Which, what do you know? Yeah, A could be zero or B could be zero. Or they could both be zero. But that's the only number that this works for. If I told you that A times B equals one, do you know what either one of those numbers is? Not conclusive. Yeah, it could be A could be one half and B could be two, but you're not sure. So, so this, is, this is the reason why we have this special rule about zero, and this helps us to solve. Now, the problem is with solving a quadratic, okay? So we're getting, the whole reason why we factor is to get ready to solve. If you wanted to solve, let's say, 2x plus 3 equals 1, how would you solve that? That's, by the way, this is called a linear equation. Why is it called linear? Because we have x to the first power. Anytime you have x to the first power as being your highest exponent, this is an, an equation in one variable. And how would you solve? Not solve, solve. <laughs> yeah, 2x equals negative 2, and x would equal negative 1. Okay, so this is my point about this one. We're, not, we're never sure what either number would be. Here, when we solve a linear equation, we get one number. We could plug it in. We could always check it to see if it works. Now, if I have x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0, can I get x by itself here? Could I isolate x? And the answer is no. The reason why is because I have an x squared and x. Can I add those things together? Why not? Yeah, because they're not like terms. So the whole point of factoring, if I want to know what times itself gives me these two things, is I could factor it, right? So x times x gives me x squared. What times what gives me 4 and adds to 4? Yeah, see, I wanted something simple factorable, right? So now I've isolated either one. Since this times this, these two factors, think about this as A, think about this as B, since these two factors multiply together to give me 0, that means that x plus 2 could equal 0 or x plus 2 could equal 0. It just ha so happens I used the same exact factor because this was... Uh, perfect square trinomial. So how could I solve for x now? x equals negative 2. If I plug in, and by the way, it would be the same thing here, right? Just because my factors are exactly the same. If I plug in negative 2 to check, I would get negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 plus 4 should give me 0. And this is, by the way, the reason why the zero product property is the reason why we always set equal to 0. Because 0 is the only number that we know conclusively if I multiply it by a number, I'm going to get 0. I have to, right? So now if I plug in the negative 2 to check, I get 4 minus 8 plus 4, is that equal to 0? Yes, 0 equals 0. So that's why I always want to include my check, and my solution here is negative 2. Even though it happens twice, I'm only including it once. 
Okay, so let's look at some of these word problems now and use the same idea. So um, a very popular quadratic model, because we're going to get to graphing in a moment. So if you were to graph, if you were to take your graphing calculator and you were to graph a quadratic, now how do I know that this equation is a quadratic and not linear? Yes, so the second degree, the x1 of 2 right here, makes it quadratic. Okay? The shape of this quadratic right here, if we were to graph it, is going to look something like this. It's starting out here, it's going up and then down. Because think about, think about a ball. A ball is thrown vertically upwards. So here's the ball traveling around. Don't you notice that if, you know, how many people watch football or basketball, do you ever notice that that shape that the ball takes following gravity is going up, 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 it stops, it turns around, it comes back down to the ground, right, and hits the ground. This is a parabola. We're going to get into talking about shapes of graphs, graphs of quadratics. The linear equation was a line. We talked all about lines. We haven't really yet talked a lot about quadratics, but if we graph this, we will see this shape emerge. Okay, where here is the height and here is the time in seconds since it's thrown. When it starts out, this one, it's starting out on the ground, okay? Usually, sometimes it starts out above the ground, right? Okay, how long will it take for the ball to reach a height of 40 feet? So the equation is saying h is feet, here's the equation, where t is time in seconds after it's thrown. So how long means we're solving for t. Since we know the height is 40, we're going to plug in 40 for the height. A, h equals 40, equals 36t minus 8t squared. If I want to solve for the time, how could I solve for the time? Well, what would I want to do? I want to make sure that I set it equal to 0. So always, I, whenever I solve a quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus, oops, plus c equals 0. So you always want to start by setting it equal to 0. What could I do to get 0 on one side? So I would subtract 40. Or I could subtract 36 and add, or 36t, and add 8t squared, either way. So I'm going to subtract 40, that's one step, subtract 40. And I get 0 equals, now I want to put this in descending order. What would be the order if I could put it in descending order? t squared plus 36t minus 40. Okay, so now this is ready to factor. Whenever we solve a quadratic, for now, we're always going to want to factor it. So imagine you were going to factor this. What would you do to factor it? What do you see first going on? Do you see any greatest common factor? Four. Four goes into everything. Okay, they're all divisible by four. Now here's the other thing I'm going to say. Whenever it starts with a negative, we want to factor out the negative. Now remember when we solve equations, I can do whatever I want so long as I do the same thing to both sides. I'm going to divide everything by negative four. Can I do that? Is that a legal move? I can do whatever I want, right? So long as I do the same thing to both sides. Now I'm running out of room, so I'm going to grab this paper here. Okay, so what is 0 divided by negative 4? What is 2t squared, right? What's this become? Notice that the signs all change when I divide by a negative. Oh, is this a little bit easier to factor now, do you think? What method would you use to factor this? Yeah, factor with AC method. That's why, look, 
We're talking about the AC method. We had to do all of these steps to lead up to the factoring. When you factor using the AC method, what are you going to start by doing? Yes. And we get 20. Good. 2 times 10 gives us 20. That's A times C. And we're looking for a sum of what? Negative 9. Okay. Can you think of two numbers that add to, multiply to 20, add to negative 9? What are they? Negative 4, negative 5. Yes. So now we break up that middle. We're going to still keep the 0. We're going to keep the 2t squared. Negative 4 t minus 5t plus 10. We've broken it into four terms. What do we do to factor when we have four terms? Factor by grouping. So we're going to group the first two, group the last two. Zero equals, what's the greatest common factor here? 2t. We get t minus 2. What's the greatest common factor here? My, negative 5, because whenever it starts with a negative, we're going to factor out a negative, and we get t minus 2. And we better have a match here. If we don't have a match, we've done something wrong. So what do we do to keep factoring here? 2t minus 5, t minus 2. Okay, great. And now, this is where we get into the solving part. We, this, these are the factors. But remember, if this is the first factor and this is the second factor and I multiply these two factors together and it gives me zero, what do I know about each factor? They could be equal to zero. So we take the factors and we set them equal to zero because this is the part where we're actually going to solve. So we want to solve. How do we solve for t? I've been able to isolate t. You see that? Because of the factoring, I'm able to isolate. What should I do next to solve? Yeah, I add 2 to both sides. I get t equals 2. What do I do to solve here? 2t equals 5. T. How do I get t by itself? t equals, what's half of 5? 2.5 if you want, okay? So they're saying that at 2 times 2.5 seconds and 2 seconds, the ball is at 40 feet. So if we think about the height, here's the ball, the, the path of the ball. Here's our time. Here's our height. So if the height is 40 feet above the ground, we have time 2, and time 2.5. Does everybody see how why that happens there? So it's, imagine the ball is going up, it reaches a height of 40, then it gets to its maximum. Later on we're going to learn that this is called the vertex, this point where it changes direction from going up, 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 and then turns around and comes back down, but I reach that height at two different times. That's why I get two positive answers here. Does that make sense? Okay, we're not even done with this problem. It's asking more. Will the ball be at 40 feet two different times? What do you think? The answer to that is yes. How do you know? Yeah, and also because we got two different positive times, right? When will the ball hit the ground? Now, what is the height? If here is the ground on our drawing, what is the height equal to at the ground? How far above the ground is the ball if it's on the ground? Uh, if the ball is on the ground, how far above the ground is it? Zero. And by the way, h equals zero is the same thing as the x-intercept. So we want to know here, what time is it when it hits the ground, okay? So that means we're going to take our original equation, and that was 36t minus 8t squared. What are we going to set the height equal to? Zero. The height 
is equal to zero. You see that? So we're plugging in zero for the height. What can I do to solve this? What do you think? Factor it. Bingo. <laughs> That's going to be the answer from now on. What should I do to solve it? Factor it. Okay, what, are, what, what can we factor out of here? What do they both have in common? You said 4? Four? 4 and t. 4t gets factored out, and what gets left behind? 9 minus 2t equals 0. So if I know this is, this by the way is one factor, and this is another factor. If I know that these two things multiply together to give me 0, what should I do now to solve? Once I've factored, I want to set this 4t equals 0. What number times 4 gives you 0? t equals 0. I'm going to set this factor, 9 minus 2t equals 0. What should I do to solve here? Subtract 9, I get negative 2t equals negative 9. And now what? T equals 4.5. Half negative divided by a negative is a positive. So if we go back here and look at our graph, that means it was on the ground when T equals 0 because somehow you threw a ball directly from the ground. I don't know how you did that. But, you know, put your hand on the ground with the ball and throw it in the air. No one does that. But t equals 0, so it was on the ground here. And what was the time here when it went up and back down and it landed? What time was it? t equals 4.5 seconds. So for word problems, we should write sentences. Okay? The ball hits the ground after... 4.5 seconds. It, was, it started out on the ground at 0 seconds, at time 0 as well. Here we could say, what would be the sentences you would write for the previous question about the, the height of 40? The ball is at 40 feet at 2 seconds and 2.5 seconds. Okay, so we're writing s complete sentences for these. Oh, since this was a long word problem, I will stop it and we'll do the next word problem on the next video.